Tennessee's been waiting for its big play offense to kick into gear and arrived last week in the first half against Florida. In the second half, though, mistakes cost Tennessee a chance to pull off an upset win. The Vols go back on the road this week to Missouri, looking to notch their first SEC win of the season. Two high-powered offenses ready to square off in Columbia. Highlights of the Vols and the Tigers and more on Tennessee football coming up next on the Josh Heupel Show. It's time now to announce the Vol Scholar Athlete of the Week, presented by JTEC North America. Engineering in motion. Everything we do revolves around motion. This week, we recognize Valus Jones Jr. In fall 2019, he graduated from USC with a degree in social science. He is graduating with a master's degree in agricultural leadership in fall 2021. Pride, tradition, passion. This is Tennessee football, and this is the Josh Heupel Show. Presented each week across Big Orange Country by First Horizon, by UT Medical Center, by Food City, and by Farm Bureau Insurance. Tennessee Volunteers won on the road Saturday to Columbia, Missouri, looking for their first SEC win of the season, first road win, and Coach Hype, your team played extremely well in the game. Yeah, well, we talked about that, uh, you know, it was an early kickoff in, in Columbia, a uh, chance of thunderstorms. We we're going to have to create our own energy early in the football game. I, I love that we came out and competed in what might not have been the most juiciest of atmosphere, uh, but we played extremely hard right from the jump and, and did a lot of things really well early in that football game. So Missouri gets the ball first. You set a tone on defense because you forced a punt, and then you take the ball right down the field. Yeah, it was, it was great to see our defense go out, operate efficiently and effectively, um, tackle the ball in space early in the football game extremely well. Uh, able to get relatively good field position and uh, offensively hit on all cylinders. Huge uh, play at the end of the uh, drive where uh, Javante Pay Payton has a, a post route. Uh, really good job in protection to Hendon Hooker. Nice pass. And a really great pass by Hooker. Absolutely. But when we talk about, we, everybody's going to talk about the offense in this game. You scored 62 points. But I really thought that first stop by the defense set the tone because Missouri thought they have a really good offense and could make it a shootout. Yeah, you've heard me say a lot that it's, it's really all three phases of the game playing well together. Uh, offensively, certainly a, a ton of positives from this football game, not punting during the course of the game. But it really starts with defense and special teams, what we did in those phases of the game, uh, giving those opportunities to the offense. Uh, proud of the way that our kids competed. You also said before they gave you have to run the ball, and Tyon Evans had a big, big day for you. Yeah, not just Tyon. A bunch of guys did. Hendon Hooker played a huge part in that. Jabari Small was running the ball really well before he got injured. I thought our front five guys did a great job uh, during the course of the day of uh, setting edges, uh, creating double teams, creating vertical movement, vertical seams. Structurally, they were a little bit different than what we anticipated. I uh, thought our kids <laughs> really communicated and got in sync early in the football game, adjusted extremely well. Credit to our coaching staff as well. Offensive efficiency. I mean, every time you had the ball in the first half, you scored. <sighs> yeah, uh, want that last drive to be a touchdown instead of a field goal, <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, um, you know, on the plane ride back, you, you start <laughs> looking at the things that got to get better, too. Um, I, I do, uh, as much as I love what happened on the field, I liked that our preparation was its best. And in particular, the last 48 hours, um, the way we were in the building, the way we took the plane, the way the locker room was before the game, the little things added up to the big, big things that everybody see, uh, saw uh, today. And, and uh, excited that our, our kids are continuing to grow, continuing to buy in and there's an end result that shows the way that those kids are working inside of our building. How important is focus on the road? You have to have it to win. It's you? important everywhere, um, but it certainly is on the road too. And, and um, you know, you've seen us when we haven't played as efficiently as we're capable of. It's been little things that have thrown us off, and it's not all 11 guys, it's one guy. For the most part today, uh, we played pretty clean. Hendon Hooker looked like he was in complete control, poised, was running the offense very efficiently too. Yeah. Decisive. Obviously, his feet were a big part of the football game. Uh, the run pass option, he did a great job on all day long. Uh, handled some of our checks in our run game extremely well. And then as a passer in the pocket, uh, played super efficient, took great care of the football. 
Um, you know, you saw us huddling at times in the second half um, in almost a four-minute mode. I thought he operated and, and uh, was extremely efficient all day long. And from a play caller, it's nice when you don't have to punt. First time since uh, 2009 <laughs> that Tennessee hadn't punted in a game. Yeah, I, it, it's great that our kids went and played uh, extremely hard for each other. And uh, some of the fruits of their labor uh, showed up in the way that we played today. So Tennessee gets the SEC road win, a big one at Missouri, 62-24. Show you first half highlights next here in the Josh Heupel Show. Tennessee travels to Columbia, Missouri to take on the Missouri Tigers. And uh, coming into the game, I know you, you say every week you got to run the ball, got to run the ball efficiently, yeah. and you really did against Missouri. I really do mean that, too. we got to <laughs> run the ball efficiently. That's where everything starts for us offensively. Um, you can't just live in a drop back world. It's really hard for your five guys up front trying to protect. Uh, today, uh, we operated really efficiently. Uh, I thought, you know, our, our running backs that played early in the football game did a great job of pressing the line of scrimmage. You saw them bounce at times. For the most part, they bounced when it was right. They played pad under pad and, and finished the runs. 458 yards rushing, the most for a Tennessee team since 1994. A lot of good. Um, as a coach, uh, you start pointing out all the things that can be better, too. So, uh, uh, How'd you think your I, line controlled the, I, I, the game? I thought they did a really good job. I thought the five guys up front uh, operated really, really efficiently and, and at times were extremely violent, moved the line of scrimmage. I, I love a lot of what we did. Um, you know, and, and our running backs, and our, you got to include our tight ends in that, mm -hmm. and then you got to include the quarterback. Some of those long runs, it tells you that guys out on the perimeter are doing the right things too and playing to the whistle and playing for somebody else when they don't have the ball in their hands. That's really important. And <clears throat> as we continue to grow, if we continue to buy into those things, uh, we have a chance to become more and more efficient in what we're doing offensively. And another good thing, every lineman that made the trip got a chance to play, I think, in the game. <clears throat> yeah, at the end of the ball game, a lot of guys got an opportunity to play. And uh, it's always a, a great reward for those guys. The time, effort, energy that they put into it, the way they cheer on and, and, uh, and you know, applaud their, their brothers uh, when, they, when they have success. Um, you saw some of those guys that are down the line when they got an opportunity to go in. One, they played well, but two, the other guys were extremely excited to see those guys out and, and, uh, and make plays they too. they got to push each other. Absolutely. You? So let's pick a first half highlights. Tennessee and Missouri, and the highlights are brought to you by Humana, a more human way to health care. So Tennessee wins the toss to <coughs> Furs, and Missouri will get the ball first. The things that uh, concerned you about this Missouri offense? Yeah, their ability to run the football uh, had been really efficient offensively all year long. It starts with the run game. I thought we did a great job of handling the line of scrimmage. Uh, we created pressure right there. Uh, Jeremy Banks add on, adds on and, and gets a sack. Christian Charles, a great break on the ball right here, almost has a pick. If he stays on his feet, he's going to have a chance to, uh, to take that one to the house, maybe. Um, but uh, Fresh great way to start his first the game. start. Yeah, yeah great way to start, right start the football game. Right here, a little run pass option. <clears throat> great perimeter blocking right there. You can see Princeton run his man into the sideline right there. Come back with a little tempo right here and, and uh, <clears throat> a good run right here. Not, not as clean as we needed to be up front, but uh, able to pick up the first down right there. Come back into unbalanced formation, just kind of outgapped him right here with a nice uh, five, six yard run. And then Hooker following small for a first down. Yeah, a little design uh, quarterback uh, run right there. And, and then uh, off the tempo on, on the first down, able to shoot the ball down the football field. You can see the backside safety coming over right there. Hendon does a great job of seeing that, feeling it, driving the football instead of putting a bunch of air underneath it. Great route by Javante, getting clean and, and uh, winning the secondary right there. It's good for 35 yards. His third straight game with a touchdown reception, Javante Payton. <clears throat> Controlling the line of scrimmage, making the quarterback uncomfortable. You saw it all day long. We handled all their misdirection trick plays all day long and did a good job, good enough job on their screen game too. Right here, this drive, I thought we had a chance to get off the field a, a couple times. Warren's a little soft in coverage right here. Man, great effort right there. Um, I think that was Byron Young. Mm -hmm, uh, was. Great effort coming underneath the block, then defeats the man on and, and creates a negative play. Lack again. Yeah, I get him into third and nine right here. We're in a, in a drop eight situation, and our hook player just gets out of position a little bit. Uh, quarterback did a good job of, of using his eyes and, and moving, moving our guy and uh, picks up the first down. 
contained Tyler Beatty very well. He had 20 on carries, but just 41 yards in the game. Yeah, a guy that was uh, first or second in, in the country in, uh, in uh, total offense, mm -hmm. I, I believe. About 149 all told. <clears throat> yeah, and, and we did a great job of containing him all day long, making him uncomfortable. Again, we got uh, Jalen coming free right there, making the quarterback get it out of his hands long before he's ready to, to make a decision with the football right there. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, our, our, our personnel did a great job of winning, and then uh, some of our scheme from uh, Coach Banks and staff did a great job of, of getting guys clean all day long. Holding to the field goal right there. Midway in the first half, and Hooker again going to work. Yeah, uh, Bayless, you saw him in the slot a little bit more than he has been. <clears throat> did a great job, had a full week of practice. Excited about some of the things that he did in, in the middle of the football field. And there's Jamari Small again. What the reason for Jones to go in the slot? You want to get him the ball more? Is it easier to get it to him in the slot? <laughs> nah, I, we do want to get him the ball more. You know, you and I t have talked. Just kind of had a, a mash unit uh, at the mm -hmm. wide receiver position from spring ball to training camp to early in the season. Um, good to get him uh, going in the middle of the football field. Good run by Small again. Yeah, I thought Jabari did a great job on, on this drive of, of pressing the line of scrimmage, understanding the blocking scheme, knew where the free hat was coming from, bounced it when it was right, played with low pads. Tyon comes in right here, little guard uh, power scheme right here. He bounces it, which is right, based off of how they fit it, and, and walks into the end zone. Tyon Evans gets his first <coughs> touchdown of the day, and now the Tigers go back to work, and again, Yeah, big play on, on the screen. Uh, whether it was wide receiver screen or, or uh, running back screen, <clears throat> um, had a bunch of it. I, I thought we rallied to the football well all day long. A lot of white shirts around that one. <clears throat> another negative play right here. Pockets collapsing on him. He's got to get rid of the football. Again, into another third and long situation. Bazelak <clears throat> bends it down the field and almost picked off yeah, by nice, Theo Jackson. Nice twist game right there. Um, Byron Young's almost coming uh, clean. You can see Matt Butler keeping contain right there, uh, forcing him to get rid of the football in an uncomfortable situation. First play of this drive, Tyon Evans. Yeah, uh, great run by him. Uh, want him to keep the ball tucked right here until he crosses the goal line. <laughs> but <laughs> well blocked up front. Um, they're actually in a cover zero blitz right there. Uh, great job by Darnell right on the pole and, and uh, uh, really a, a a great way to start that drive and, and finish it all at one time. That went for 92 yards for Evans and now Bazelak out of his end zone. Yeah, second and long right here. Do a great job of sinking out underneath it. They got a little double move actually on our corner right there who plays it well. Uh, Forced him to drop the football down. And this was just a great catch by Bannister to get his foot <coughs> down. So that's a first down for Missouri. And Bazelak over the middle, intercepted by Jeremy Banks. Oh man, I, I thought he was coming down the uh, that sideline yeah, right. and he's going to score. Former running back Dang trying right. to get to the end zone. He looked like it at the end too. Uh, comes up just a little bit short. We got a rule inside of our building. If you score on defense, you get to play on offense. I told uh, Jeremy as uh, we were getting ready to walk out tonight, that, that's about as close as you can get. We might have to get him going on offense, uh, give him that <laughs> offensive give play. Him the ball. Yeah, dang right. But really, just, really yeah, great job great uh, off the play action, sinking, playing off the quarterback's eyes, ability to make that play. Great job by him. And so a short touchdown drive of about a half <coughs> yard to Tyon Evans. Here yeah. comes Missouri back. Back to back, um, quick drives right there. Defensively come right back out. Give up a, a little bit here on, on the outside zone. That might have been the best outside zone play of the day. Actually just kind of misfit it on the interior. This defense really runs to the football now, doesn't it? <clears throat> they play hard. They play on the other side of the line of scrimmage. They disrupt things. On the edge right there, we get captured uh, off, a, uh, off of a slant by, by Tyler Barron, and then uh, uh, they're able to get in the end zone right there. Hooker going long. Great body control by Sed right there. Tillman uh, opening up his back hip. Strong hands to the catch, taking his eyes to the catch. <clears throat> you can see our outside receivers doing a great job of blocking the perimeter screens for our slots there all day long. Hooker this time <coughs> taken down for the sack, and now it's third down and 12. Yeah, get beat up on uh, on a uh, blitz uh, right there in, in protection. Come back with a little uh, middle screen right there, and and. Uh, 
Tight end does a great job of getting it started. Then you can see Cade Mays out in front. Guys uh, out in front of uh, Bayless and does a great job after the catch. Bayless Jones on the day had seven catches for 79 yards and that touchdown went 35 yards. Defensively come out right here and, and uh, get him into a third and long situation here. <clears throat> Ken, you can see the pressure right there by, by Jeremy. Theo's able to uh, rally the football from the middle of the football field, playing off the quarterback's eyes, get him off the field. Laneath with a nice run right here, really well executed in, in, the, uh, in the run game right there by the five guys up front. Hooker being pressured, but he finds Tillman. Good to see us operate really e efficiently in the, in the pass game. Hooker keeps this one. Yeah, a little tackle pull scheme right here. Uh, they squeezed it, and he does a great job of, of reading it and pulling it to the open space right there. Fourth down situation right here, uh, able to, to get vertical and, and get the first down. Thought he was in on the first one and, and then uh, have to come back with another play here and, and get it in. Great movement up front. You see Cade, Spragans, and, and Jerome all in the end zone with their guy. If you score with your man, odds are we're going to score too. And so Hooker keeps it, gets the touchdown. Tennessee scores 45 points in the first half, the most in a game since 2000 for Tennessee. The offense was just so impressive in that first half and efficient. Yeah, offense was really efficient. Um, but if you look at the first half as a whole, man, all three phases, playing really mm -hmm. hard, playing for each other, creating energy on the sidelines. Uh, I thought it was our best game in, in just the way we managed up to kickoff and then how we operated and functioned together as a football team prior to that first half. Tennessee had the lead at halftime. When we come back, a feature on Tennessee cornerback Alante Taylor here on the Josh Heifel Show. Dobbs going to try, nope, going to keep it. Dobbs breaks a tackle to the left side of the 40 to midfield. It's a foot race to the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Josh Dobbs to the 5, to the checkerboards. Touchdown, 70 yards, Josh Dobbs. Wow. What a run by Dobbs. The entire Missouri defense went out to the tailback, and then Dobbs outran everybody. 70 yards for a sprint. Second rushing touchdown of the night on senior night. Back to throw, looks left, still looks. Now he guns it, pass, intercepted at the 25 yard line and down the sideline to midfield, Alante Taylor. Coming into his senior season, Alante Taylor looked back on his three years at Tennessee and how fast they went by and also decided how he wanted to approach his last season. I mainly just try to slow down, not rushing days, not rushing games to hurry up and get here. Um, practices to be, like kind of be over, things like that. And by doing that, I, I feel like I take in everything now, but it's still going by so fast. I mean, we're getting ready to go into week five already of our season. I feel like I was so hard on myself from freshman and junior year that I missed a lot of opportunities because of that. And so this year, I have my mind, so we just have fun enjoy the moment you know it's a new coaching staff things like that figure out who they are build those relationships so you know once i graduate and if that opportunity of the nfl doesn't happen for me you know i have those connections with the coaches here that could possibly help me like with future jobs with his outgoing personality is no surprise alante has become a leader on his team and over the years he's learned how to lead thanks to the ball leaders academy and that's led to other opportunities and relationships as a player, just being able to come over here and build those relationships with my teammates. I feel like as a leader, you have to kind of understand each individual person so that you can lead them in different ways because not everyone can be led in the same way. Coming into the Ball Leaders Academy when I got here, um, it gave me a whole different view of how to like lead other people. So as a player, as far as that, just different leadership skills that actually carried on to getting opportunities such as being the vice president for the SEC Football Leadership Council and then being president for SAC and then of course joining my fraternity. But just from those leadership skills, it's helped me as a person, just off the field, but on the field, just understand like, I can lead different people in different ways. When Coach Heibel came in here and we got to do all the fun things outside of football, um, those are opportunities to lead then. So just building those relationships with those guys that we probably didn't have changes because now we're on the practice field and we can laugh with each other. But then we get to the sideline, we can communicate as, you know, great competitors, as great teammates so that we can you know, accomplish more goals and things like that once we get back in the field. Jones to the near side. Copeland's wide open. 
and spins his way to the 15 yard line. Ball came out. Extra effort from the Tennessee defense. Huge play right there by Alante Taylor, just ripping on that football. One of the opportunities Taylor had before coming into his senior season was traveling to Belize with the Ball Leaders Academy, where Alante and other athletes from the program participated in a cultural exchange. It was exciting, but I've always wanted to do something like that. Uh, come from a background where we couldn't afford to do anything like that. So having that opportunity by joining the Ball Leaders Academy and building those relationships and things like that was huge. But going over there, just seeing a whole different way of life, seeing how things are ran there, and how things are ran here, but really just seeing the kids, the stuff that I do have that they don't have, it doesn't bother them. So they're coming back over here. It makes me slow down sometimes with life with that as well. And sometimes I'm complaining, sometimes I'm, you know, exhausted or I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. And I kind of remind myself that the kids in Belize would love to do this. Through the grind of college football, the adversity of tough losses and coaching changes, Alante has stayed determined to work hard because of his family. My granny's my everything, but my mom and all of my aunts are like spitting images of my grandmother. And so, you know, they motivate me every day and just knowing where we come from. My mom sacrificed a lot of her time, a lot of, you know, her life for me. Um, my mom never missed games. She always found ways to get off work if she had to. She worked a double shift. I remember when Inky Johnson came and spoke to us and kind of told us his background and his story. He talked about how his mom worked two jobs and one of those jobs was Wendy's. I actually went up to Inky Johnson after one of those conversations and I said, there's a lot different in us, but one thing that we do have in common is that our moms worked at Wendy's when they were working two jobs. It's crazy because when I think about nights where we were struggling, I don't get that same like sad feeling anymore. I get the, I get energy and it's like you have an opportunity to like give back to her. And uh, that's something that I try to do each and every day. This year is really huge. Uh, I can really remember the day I walked in and I was moving into Stokely. And one thing I've, I love about this team is that we've all adapted to the change in the right way. And I said a quote that this team will not fall apart and it's something that I'm holding true to my heart just because I've been a part of teams where we kind of could have went one way and the other way. I want to make sure that we stay together because we can do a lot of good things on this team. And whenever I'm gone, Coach Hypo's staff is going to put Tennessee exactly where they needed to be from the jump when I first got here. So I truly believe that. But while I'm here, I want to make sure that I can leave an impact on this team so that they can carry that on, especially within the DB room. For the Josh Heupel Show, I'm Casey Funderburg. Any team needs veteran leaders. Yeah, absolutely. Guy that, uh, you know, really from the time that I've gotten here has been a, a mainstay in just uh, creating the uh, the legacy and the energy and, and, you know, what it means, the standard of what it means to be a, a Tennessee football player. Um, one of the first guys in the building every day, one of the last guys to leave, cares deeply about the power of T, cares and, and loves his teammates in a great way. You get really consistent work habits from him uh, every day that he's inside of the building. That's led to him playing at a really high level, too. And you can tell the guys respect him. I mean, when he's around him, you can just see they all look at Alante to see yeah. well, how's he going to do things. Yeah, absolutely. Inside of our building, he's a guy that, that they point to uh, a real maturity uh, inside of the defensive back room, uh, our defensive unit, but our, our team, too. And, and someone that's helped me build the, the foundation of, of this, this program. He's a young man that outside of the game is really mature too and, and uh, does a lot of things with the SEC, uh, with the conference and, and leadership roles. A young man that's got a great future on the field and off the field. And he's in some of the leadership groups too on campus, not only just in the SEC. He heavily active in, uh, in everything that's going on inside of the university. Alante Taylor, one of the key leaders on this Tennessee football team. Second half highlights, Tennessee and Missouri next on the Josh Heupel Show. As the old saying in football goes, games are won in the trenches, especially on defense. To win in the trenches, it's vital for defensive linemen to maintain consistent pressure on the quarterback. To maintain this pressure, it is vital to have quick feet and proper stance. Today we're doing the hoop drill, which is one of my favorite drills. It's basically, it's a big hoop and the quarterback's at the top of the key. So in the game, when you're, running, when you're rushing the edge, you have to get outside of the tackle in order to get around the tackle, which means you have to bend at your knees and ankles. And throw your top arm over, hook with your inside arm, make sure you secure the tackle, 
and get the ball up. This is my favorite drill because this is what I do. I pass rush. So an edge pass rusher, this is like his bread and butter right here. This is his go-to. I mean, speed off the edge, turn the corner, get the strip sack. It's a good day for everybody. To make sure it's a good day for everybody, it all starts with the stance and the bend of the defensive lineman. The bend of a defensive lineman is vital in gaining an advantage over the bigger offensive lineman when getting to the quarterback. So a good bend is basically your knees, ankles, and hips. Um, you don't want to be a waist bender. Waist benders are stiff. So if you got good flexion in your knees and your ankles, good flexion in your hips and things, it's easier for you to turn dip and turn the corner. I mean, offensive linemen, they're stiff mostly. So they don't like to bend over to like get smaller guys. Securing the tackle, you have to make sure that you secure with your inside. You come over the top with your outside because that's where the ball is. So you tomahawk over the top, knocks the ball out, boom, there's the ball. Hooker, gonna give it to him and he's hitting the button. No, Hooker keeps it. And he goes around right tackle and scores a touchdown. Tennessee has the lead over the Missouri Tigers at halftime, 45 to 10. The message to your team at halftime. Play hard, compete, be mature competitors. Asked them what the score was at halftime. They said 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, <laughs> that means that they're listening to, to what we're trying to sell. I wanted to see them go out and play and, and play Tennessee football at a really high level. Putting two halves together this time of the season is very important to win football games in this league. you gotta, you got to learn how to play 60 minutes. Uh, games don't last for 59 <laughs> minutes. They're 60 minutes long. you got to play every minute like it's your last. So let's pick up second half highlights of Tennessee and Missouri. The highlights presented by UT Medical Center, the official health care provider of the Vols. And Tennessee will get the ball first to start the second half. Yeah, they got a great kickoff uh, uh, kicker, and he boots it out the end zone. <clears throat> a little, a little uh, replay right here. Hendon does a great job of reading it, pulling it. Uh, gets you into manageable second down right here. A little power read play and uh, get a running back matched up on, on the mic, mic linebacker out in space. Really good job by our wide receivers, blocking on the perimeter all day long. Hooker zings one that time to Fant. Yeah, I get uh, Princeton uh, working across the middle. Uh, something that uh, we want to make sure that we're continuing to do more of here as the season unfolds. <clears throat> See Javante P Payton doing a great job blocking out there on a perimeter screen play for, for Velas. Nice counter play right here. There's some space that's created. A right guard and tackle. You can see Dane Davis in the ball game. Does a great job. A little split zone right here that uh, goes for five. Got a chance to read that a little bit better by hand, and then that's probably a walk in out the left side of it right there. Hooker spun down on second down. Now it's third down at the 10. Yeah, got a little slant concept here, and, and their DB does a great job of breaking on the football. Uh, Batting it out, we were forced to kick a field goal. This is one of those things that uh, we could be better at the end of this drive and, and find a way to, to get seven. I'd like to start faster than we did. But again, Tennessee continues to score points on possessions, and it's 48 to 10. Yeah, this is uh, this is about becoming a mature football team and being able to fit things the right way, um, not letting your foot off the gas at any moment. Uh, I think that's a lesson that uh, our football team needs to learn right there from, from that moment right there and just get out, out gapped and, and give up a huge return right there. Wide it on the screen and then Evans trying to get to the outside. He makes the first guy miss most times. Yeah, he does a great job of, uh, of finishing his runs right there. Uh, gets tripped up actually on, on the guard right there and, and isn't able to keep his feet. Third and three. <clears throat> Bayless on a little out route right here. Does a great job catching it, getting vertical. Want better ball security right there from our skill guys. That's going to be critical as we continue in conference play, taking care of the football, done a good job the last couple of weeks. And again, that's Evans. He had 156 yards, his second 100-yard rushing game of the season. Yeah, a little boot play right here, and plays it pretty well. Um, ends up being two-on-one, and, and Hennon does a great job making the guy miss and, and uh, coming out and gaining positive yards right there. And speaking of positive yards, uh, only three uh, yards as a pass goes to Tillman on a great catch in the end zone. Yeah, great play on the, on the post by, by Cedric. Good, really good protection right there. And Hendon does a great job sitting in the pocket. That was 
<clears throat> a big conversion right there in, in, uh, in a tough situation to, to continue to spread the gap here on the scoreboard. I was going to mention on the rushing yards, Tennessee yeah, had 458 yards rushing and only three uh, minus yards all game, and two of those were by Hooker. Yeah. It's, uh, Not many negative yards. That's a positive no, side of the a positive offense. play. We missed a play by, by Jeremy Banks. That, man, I thought it was a great play. They're actually reading him with the quarterback and running back, and he does a great job staying home and then has the speed to go make the play in space. It was a really nice play watching that on, on film. Get beat on a little crossing route right there. See Tamari McDonald thought he got a lot of activity in, in the middle of the football field today and, and did a lot of really good things on the defense side of the ball. There's Beatty again and a good play by Roman Harris. Yeah, man, Roman just playing with effort, strain, defeating the first blocker, coming underneath it, getting vertical, making a play. You can see the pocket just collapsing, really tough uh, on the quarterback all day long. Thought we did a great job with our twist games, uh, creating penetration up the middle, but then also containing them out the back end of it. There's Jalen McCullough. Yeah, one hand, one hand man right there uh, getting the pick. Great play by him uh, on the overthrow. Ball goes through the receiver Sanzio tip drill and McCullough hanging on to it. Yeah, you want to be opportunistic. Uh, guys that uh, work hard and compete hard and, and uh, you know catch balls off the jugs every day, do all those little things. It's amazing how uh, the football gods kind of. Uh, kind of uh, play favor to you and, and uh, he gets that opportunity right there. So now it's 55-17, late the third quarter. Yeah, uh, pick up uh, some positive yards. Jalen Wright with a nice bounce run right there. Get him out in, in space on, on the Mike linebacker right there, able to pick up uh, nine or 10 yards right there. A little inside zone. Good movement. Thought you saw the line of scrimmage change all day long in a positive way for uh, for Tennessee. White shirts moving, uh, the dark shirts there. Hooker gets out of problems. Tennessee keeps the ball now going to the fourth quarter. Yeah, third and two. Uh, nice pickup right there. Marcus Pierce in the ball game. <clears throat> a little design quarterback boot right here uh, that they end up matching out uh, really well. Got into a little bit four minute mode here at times. You saw that in the second half, just, uh, you know, it was our guys in, in the clock situation, uh, trying to manage both, both of those things as, as the game wore on. First and goal right here, <clears throat> driving down to the, to the one yard line. Thought he had gotten in on, on that one. He said his knee was down and so, try it again on third down. Yeah. Come up a little bit short there. Thought he might have gotten in on this one for sure. Uh, didn't look like he was down. He was actually uh, covered up or uh, on top of one of our guys. Depends on where his knee was down, but he ended up in the end zone. <clears throat> they didn't give it the touchdown. Yeah, I'm talking to the officials and they said all those things are being reviewed. But no touchdown and here comes Missouri back the other way. Yeah, I don't like, uh, don't like offensively that we didn't finish that drive. Now you give them a, a little bit of momentum or, or let them breathe and, you know, they hit you with a, a slant pattern. We don't tackle it uh, well as, as we're, uh, we're coming down on top of the pressure. He's able to spit out and, and uh, get some positive yards. Second and 10 for Bazelak. Nice throw and catch right there over the top of, of, uh, of T-Mac. Bazelak just flips it out this time to his yeah. tight end. Latte actually tipped that ball, does a nice job of being the quarterback player and then reading the pitch and uh, gets his hands on it. Just can't get enough of it. <clears throat> really job, good job right here on the misdirection, uh, playing it. <clears throat> Thought Beasley was, uh, was close to being there to make that play and got hung up a little bit. Little jet sweep here for the touchdown. <coughs> And yeah, we Tigers got a chance to it. leverage that football a little bit better and, and finish that drive out the right way. Now, Joe Milton at quarterback for Tennessee. Yeah, does a good, ni nice job on uh, quarterback draw right there. Marcus Pierce with a really nice job of, of getting vertical right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Pierce again, up the middle. Yeah, park a ball in at center, to, did a really nice job during the course of this drive, and um, J.J. Crawford get, getting a bunch of work. 
good to get uh, some of those guys that haven't had a ton of reps, some some game game uh, reps here. Jackson Lampley's in there as well for <clears throat> Tennessee. Yeah, a corner crash right there that uh, Marcus makes him miss, and, and Lamel does a good job on the safety of closing out. And, Great way to finish the ball game. You saw it on it during the course of the game, just mm -hmm. the energy from the sidelines, mm -hmm. our guys seeing him score. Pierce is a great story. He came from Maryville College and transferred in and gets, gets a chance to score this touchdown to cap off the Tennessee win against the Missouri Tigers. And you see the reaction as he gets to the sideline as Tennessee gets a big, big win, 62 to 24. Takeaways overall from the performance of your football team. Lead up to it, you've heard me say that a bunch already on the show or after the ball game. I just thought our preparation during the week, we've continued to practice the right way. Um, the last 48 hours were our best 48 hours leading up to kickoff. The maturity of our football team, we're continuing to grow the right way. Uh, today it showed up for us on the, on the football field, um, which is great for our players to, to have that end result. <clears throat> I love that they care about one another. They love competing. We're playing really hard from snap to whistle, man. And if we can continue to grow that way, uh, we got a chance uh, every single week. Tennessee notches its third one of the season. We'll take you to the locker room next here on the Josh Heupel Show. It's time to announce the Advanced Auto Parts Player of the Game. This week, it's Hendon Hooker. He was 15 of 19 for 225 yards with three touchdowns through the air. He also had 74 yards and one touchdown on the ground with 14 carries. Congratulations to Hendon our Advance Auto Parts player of the game. Advance your auto at Advance Auto Parts. I say this the first time we really played together the whole four quarters as a team. So if we can continue to do that, we can continue to have great outcomes. When I, when that play, when we first called that play, I was reading through it and as uh, soon as I had did my, my mesh, and I looked up to the field, it was just straight green grass. My, uh, my offensive line been playing at a high level all night. So all that is is praise to them, you know? If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have a night how we had tonight. Uh, I wouldn't say it was easy. <clears throat> we just was locked in and on the same page. I wouldn't say it was easy, you know, but nothing's never easy, you feel me? But I say we were just more locked in than we ever was before. You know, playing football every game is my favorite game. Um, just enjoying it. Uh, I'm extremely blessed to be out there playing. I was really just taking it one play at a time and um, approaching every play in its individual play. Uh, every day we prepare, every, every quarterback prepares as the starter. Um, eventually, uh, throughout the practices throughout the week, um, everyone will get to distribute the ball, throw the ball um, to the starter guys. Um, really uh, just coming out and those guys rallying around me uh, has been a special moment. Um, just keep pushing forward from here. Oh, it's a it's a big part of our philosophy and how we want to just just play defense um, in this new scheme. You know, just put the offense on on the offensive. You know, and make them react to us, uh, play aggressive, make them uncomfortable, and make big plays. All oh, helps a lot. You know, it uh, it puts a lot of like pressure and stress on the opposing offenses. You know, it, it gets them out of their rhythm and it forces them to to you know think on run and and that always gives us the advantage with uh, our offense just playing as fast as they do. Time now for the First Horizon First Look, a scouting report and look ahead at the Vols upcoming opponent. Brought to you by First Horizon, the official bank of the Vols. Next weekend, Tennessee will return back to Neyland Stadium for their SEC home opener against the South Carolina Gamecocks. Led by first-year head coach Shane Beamer, the Gamecocks will look to sophomore quarterback Luke Doty, who has started each SEC game after missing time early in the season. The Gamecocks have yet to surpass 100 rushing yards as a team in an SEC matchup this season, but senior wideout Josh Van has collected multiple 100-yard performances through the air. Defensively, South Carolina is among the best in the conference in forcing turnovers. Senior defensive back Jalen Foster leads the team with interceptions in conference games with three in two matchups. Edge rusher Kingsley Enoch Bari picked up first team all-conference honors a season ago. He led the Gamecocks with six total sacks and three forced fumbles. Kickoff between Tennessee and South Carolina is at 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Central Time. In the SEC, Tennessee gets to come home for two weeks. It'll be nice to be home Saturday against South Carolina. Dang right. Huge football game for, for our program. Um, it's the biggest game on the schedule because it's the next one, right? It's the only one that we get this week. 
Uh, I know that our guys will be excited about that opportunity. Man, we need our fan base to, to create a real home field advantage. Cannot wait to walk into Neyland and, uh, and feel the energy. Uh, excited to go through the week with our guys. Um, as I've said, we continue to get better in our preparation. We're learning what it looks like to, to be a high-level college football player, and, and uh, I love how they're, they're caring and loving on each other. So uh, opportunity for us to grow one more week. Momentum and confidence, so big this time of the year, and your team has both of those right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a one-week season, right? <laughs> Every Saturday is different. The little things add up to the big things that everybody sees. we got to be right in the way that we approach it. Um, we have continued to grow. Um, we need another week of that this week. Well, big win at Missouri, Coach. Congratulations to you and your staff and the players. Oh, and we'll see you this Saturday. Thank Carolina. you. Appreciate it. Tennessee and South Carolina, noon is the kickoff at Neyland Stadium Saturday. Hope to see you there and also next week here on the Josh Heupel Show. The